Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out an electronically controlled motorized slider by Great Video Maker. And this model is the GR80QD. So in this video we're going to unbox it and take a closer look at it. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so the slider comes in in this box and mine is quite a bit beat up. It's got holes in it and I can see the bag that holds everything inside there. So and there's a lot of tape on it. So it's been a rough travel for this thing. So it is pretty large and long, but not too heavy. So hopefully everything is safe inside. I did buy it from Amazon. So that gives me, I guess, a peace of mind. Alright, so that looks like it's upside down. And there we can see the bag that is included. So there's a nice logo here up front. It does seem a little wrinkled, but there's a handle that's Velcroed. Let's go ahead and unzip it. And open it up. So as you guys can see, everything is packed very well and it's in this soft foam. So it looks like we have a little quick start guide of how to use the slider and all its controls so that's nice and it's a good quality paper so there's pockets here it looks like a bunch of different accessories well, let's go ahead and pull out the slider first so there's a little cover here on top and you guys can see a little better this is how it's packed and so you can travel with this because of this included travel case and you guys can see it snugly fits in there and looks pretty protected and if you guys notice here i got the carbon fiber version they do have an aluminum version that's priced a little better so that might be a better option not sure why i went with carbon fiber i guess i've been buying carbon fiber lately so it wasn't much more i wanted to go for that now let's go ahead and pull it out here so this is the 31 inch model they actually have a larger one or longer travel distance and unless you're going to do something a lot more extreme this is wide already or long depending on what kind of space you're working with and what kind of work you do so you know if you need a longer one they do have that and you know you will have to pay a bit more because of the length so i know there's an older model i'm not sure the model names of it but it's similar to this but on this newer one here the motor is actually separate here on one of the sides and we have a belt connects to the dolly head here that's how it moves and i think that's supposed to improve smoothness and also the sound is away from the camera if there is any kind of motor sound which they are using a newer type motor supposedly with quieter operation we're going to take a closer look at all the details here in a second let's go ahead and unbox everything from this bag so i'll start on this side and go that way so here it looks like we have a interconnecting cable and this is for the remote control and power to the slider a battery and this is an npf 750 battery these are very commonly available but if you wanted to have extra you could get them quite easily also we do get a charger to charge the battery so that's nice and it is a wall adapter that you can plug in and also comes with an adapter i guess if you live in in another country that requires this and the prawns do fold away so but we also get a bunch of different cables I'm not sure how many kind there are but there are a bunch of them including this cable here so and that looks like an extension to these cables but yeah we have one two three four five six different kind of cables so one of these should match your camera and the reason they include all these is because this slider is compatible with a bunch of different cameras to do time lapses and shutter releasing with photo and video so they definitely looks like got you covered with wiring all right and so here we have the main controller and this is also where our battery is going to go so the way this thing works is that you you connect this controller to the slider with this interconnecting cable so you know it's not wireless you have to be connected with wires and then you do all your controlling through here now the great thing about this slider is that you don't have to use the controller all the time and the motorized part of it if you don't want it can also be a manual slider as you guys can see i'm pushing it around right now and you know it's really smooth and has very good consistency so it is dual purpose not just motorized but yeah it looks like we have a nice little screen here our function buttons tripod mount quarter inch on and off switch in the back 
our battery will slide in here and on the top here is where we're going to connect all of our connections so the first one is going to be shutter release which is all those cables we saw and then the one here in the middle is actually dc input so if you wanted to use continuous power you could instead of the battery and that does require a 12 volt adapter with about four amps so you could go that route but the adapter is not included just the battery and then we have the usb port for the interconnecting cable to the slider so yeah, pretty nice controller. It is a little bit on the larger side, but overall seems pretty nice and intuitive. We'll see how it operates here in a minute. Also, we did get a little Allen wrench that was stuck in here. So I guess that's too. And this is probably for adjusting something on the slider. And last but not least, we actually get a whole fluid. Well, I don't know if it's fluid, but it's a ball mount head for the slider. Now, this is not anything super high quality, but you know, it's pretty reasonable for sure. And definitely seems like it would do the job. Honestly, I wish they would include something a little better than this. This definitely feels and looks quite cheap. But in any case, it does come with a ball mount head here that has a quick release on the top and also a little leveler. So I guess that's pretty nice. And you're gonna need something like this because you want the functionality to be able to adjust your camera, you know, up and down or wherever you need to go. So, and that'll mount right here. But yeah, that's everything that was in this bag here. So I'm gonna put some of these things back and also put my battery on charge while we take a closer look at the slider. So on the battery charger, we can see that when it's charging, it's red and when it's full, it's gonna turn green. So that's a nice little indication. All right, so this is the slider itself. So it has a sliding range of about 31 inches, but I think in reality, it's about 29 or something or something like that. So not completely that, but very close to it. I'm gonna get you guys off the tripod and we can look at it a little closer in detail. So if we're looking at it from the front, our motor is on the right side. And the reason I say front is because this is where our cord plugs in so I guess that would be the front or your front most likely your camera is going to be pointing that way so this looks like a stepper motor and looks like everything is integrated in there and here we have a gear that's enclosed so there's nothing that you can touch with your hand as this thing's operating that will hurt you except for you know the belt itself so it looks to be very nicely constructed this is the bottom of it so we are riding on two pretty thick carbon fiber rails it looks like about an inch or so thick it appears to be quite sturdy and feels sturdy now if you guys notice there's another rod here and that's an aluminum rod and what that is is to adjust the pan as you slide side to side. So if you notice here on the top as I slide this the top here is also turning. And this is the rail that adjusts how much of this turns and you can adjust it here on each side by loosening and then moving the whole rod back and forth. So if you're going to go dead straight in the middle that should neutralize it and not spin at all and you guys can see it's not turning at all and that's how you operate the pan on the slider now going to the main sliding base here we can see that it's very nice quality and it's all aluminum feels like a really good construction we got a leveling ball here a little logo we also have a locking screw here that if, when you tighten it it'll lock it so it doesn't turn you need to lock it so the pan itself does not turn because it's solely in sync with this rod so if you guys can see when i try to turn it the whole rod moves so there is a little bit of slop there but if i go very fine on it it's almost nothing a pretty good tolerance is not perfect but good we'll see how that translates into the video so underneath we do have these rollers here and they appear to be plastic and they go straight against the carbon fiber rods the motion feels pretty good overall there is a little spot right here where it kind of dips a bit or something. So maybe because of this mounting, it's a little bit closer together, what it feels like, because it gets a little looser right here. It's a very small amount and probably won't be seen unless you're doing it by hand. But you guys can kind of see, maybe, probably can't see it. It's small enough and it seems like the more I do it, it seems to go away. So, But other than that, it's very smooth throughout the whole length. So I don't think this is gonna be an issue at all. Now there is an adjustment that you can do if, if it is a little bit loose or maybe you feel like you need to tighten it a bit more, you have these adjustments right here. And that was that little Allen wrench we saw earlier. You can loosen these and then turn it just a bit to get closer or farther away to adjust the tension on the rods. So let's go ahead and flip this thing around. And here underneath, we can see a lot better of how this thing works. So you guys can see the lock just pushes literally against the rod. So it does have a plastic end on it. So it doesn't, you know, scratch it just in case you try to move it with the rod. But you know, keep in mind it just pushes against the rod. And so these two wheels here are stationary. And then these two wheels here are actually adjustable. So those are the two little Allen screws on the other end you'll loosen. And then there's an eccentric nut inside where 
if you turn it it goes closer or farther away so and once you get it to where you want it you lock it in with the allen screw so if you do need to adjust it it is adjustable also speaking about adjustability we have our belt here and the way the belt works it is connecting right here on both ends so this is one side and then the other and it goes all the way around the motor here and then back to this idler pulley now on this idler pulley, I'm not sure if it adjusts here or not, but it does appear that maybe it does. But also you can try to adjust it here by loosening these and then just pulling on the belt and tighten them up. So, you know, there's ways of getting it tighter or looser. So we do have three mounting points. So this is our main one here on the center. And this is where you're going to mount, I guess, most of the time. So you do need a pretty decent tripod because you're, you know, offsetting weight to each side quite a bit. Now the ideal way to have it is have a tripod in the middle and then two supporting tripods on the side and that does have the normal quarter inch and the larger one on each side here but for this size i would think with a normal tripod the center should be enough to do most everything you would need to unless you're going to have something really heavy on but here you guys can see how the panning works and it's quite a simple ingenious design all it is is just let's go ahead and offset it here so when you have it offset what happens is whenever this goes side to side because this is uneven it'll make this you know either go one way or the other and also depending on which way you go this way or the other way you're either going to track something like this or you're going to really pan like that now for the last part we haven't looked at is we do have four rubber round ball feet here on each corner and they are adjustable you can unscrew it they do have a washer that you can lock it in on a certain height so that's nice to see and let's go ahead and see how far these things come out okay so they're not too long but you know it's enough to level out the slider so I'm gonna run mine all the way down like they were because I want to you know get as low as I can to the ground so yeah, very well built overall, looks really nice. Well, let's go ahead and flip it back around. And let's go ahead and mount this ball head here on top. It looks like they have an adapter already screwed into there because you can have either the quarter or this larger. Ball head has the larger. But yeah, we're just gonna simply screw it on there. And there is a nice rubber pad here, so it's gonna stick really well to it once you, you know, get it on there. And this thing does have fluid motion side to side. And there's a lock for it right here. So I'm gonna lock it in so I can tighten it a little better unlock it so you can set up your camera where you need it and then lock it in so very happy to see that feature on there it's quite important depending on what kind of slides you're trying to make so this big knob here is for the main ball and that releases it and you tighten it where you want it you know pretty much all this stuff is pretty explanatory now the only thing that's kind of a downer here is that even though we're pretty low to the ground seems like you know our ball head and by the time our camera mounts it's going to be you know about a foot high but yeah here with the ball now we can see how this panning and panorama works so right now i'm not sure what we're in but let's go ahead and so if we slide it we can see this is a panorama mode because it's actually going out and now it's centered here and then it goes the other way so right now it's covering a huge field of view and this is good for time lapses which by the way you can program this thing to time lapse with your camera and move accordingly each step so if we go the other way completely what we're going to do is we're going to focus so the more we go this way or if we go all the way this is going to be the most extreme tracking from center to center so this is going to be the closest to the tripod you guys can see how aggressive that is it points really hard towards the center at the ends now if you offset it just a little bit like this not all the way down you're going to have a much farther away tracking so you do have to set this up manually it's not automatic tracking where it sees the item and tracks it you actually have to set it up to track it depends on how far your your subject is away from the slider and this is where you adjust the tracking for that all right, so for the next part, let's go ahead and connect our controller. So we're going to grab our interconnecting cable. And so the USB part goes into the controller itself. And the cable is not too long. It looks like it's about three and a half, four feet long. And then on the other end, we have kind of a specialty connector there. And that'll plug here at the motor on the slider. So you do have to line this up a bit, but, and it clicks right in. And there is a little button here that you push to release. So yeah, pretty easy. And so I do like that the wire here is on the side and it's not 
sliding around with the slider because I think the older versions actually were mounted straight to here everything the motor the connector and all that stuff so now if you were going to use the shutter release from this to your camera you know that's obviously going to be also another wire that's going to be moving so it's not maybe the most convenient slider but if you like analog control and nothing wireless like through your phone or whatnot else that's more finicky you know this is definitely the better way to go here so our battery hasn't fully charged but let's go ahead and pull it out i'm sure it has a decent charge on it at the moment so we're going to connect it now there is this strap here i'm not sure exactly what it's for i don't know if it has something to do with the battery or what but i'm going to take it off for now because it's kind of in my way but yeah so you know the battery is part of the controller so it is quite large but it's not too bad to hold and this size battery here should give us a few hours of operation so if you don't need hours you could use a smaller one or if you even want to you can have constant power you know if this was going to be something that doesn't move a lot you can set this all up and hard mount it somewhere and give it constant power 12 volts and you're good to go there so so let's go ahead and switch the power on and it looks like it powers up immediately and we can see our battery looks pretty much full so so we're good there so right off the bat guys the screen is really nice it's high quality and it's a color screen looks like yeah so it feels quite nice and modern so it looks like we start here with video shot time lapse and settings so let's go ahead and select a video shot the manual and outer not sure what that means exactly let's go to manual here okay so manual we can control it manual okay that makes sense so right now the speed is at 50 direction is paused and we're in manual mode so let's go ahead and try to use these here and see what happens and sure enough there it goes so once i push this it's actually going that way and this way is this way that's interesting it seems backwards and if i push it up and down we can change the speed of faster or slower let's go ahead to 100 percent and see how fast that is so let's go okay that's pretty quick actually and you guys can see that when i push it it actually ramps up so well, that's nice and i like how it starts it starts out really smooth and stops smoothly i mean it's not perfect it does have a little bit of abruption tear at the end but it's pretty good all right well that's cool so manual mode just lets you control it yourself which i kind of like and they probably will use more instead of the automatic maybe we'll see but let's see if we can go back how do we go back okay so we hold the middle button to go back so let's go to video shoot and then auto mode so we can choose to auto loop or auto stop so basically what that means is you can set where you want it to start and stop and it'll go from a to b and stop or you can auto loop it and it'll go from a and b back and forth let's just go back and we'll go to settings okay so here's where we're going to set everything up so we're going to click on set start and then we're going to go to where the start's going to be so you know you don't have to use the whole amount of slider you could use a small portion of it if that's all you wanted but i'm just going to go to this end here and call that a start and get pretty close okay so once it hits it you have to click the middle button to stop it and that's going to lock in the start so we're going to click on that hold the middle button again and then we're going to go down to set end click on that and then go to the other end so be ready to hit the middle button once it gets right to the end so it's quite important because if you don't it's going to crash into it and you know start making all that noise so once it gets there we're going to click it all right so i didn't click it fast enough so i probably should have clicked it faster but yeah that's it so now we have a start and end so the other options we have is language reset and our version so yeah pretty simple stuff here click the middle again hold it it goes back let's go to video shoot out of mode and we'll auto loop and let's go ahead and do higher speed so we can see it a little quicker here but i'm going to go ahead and give it the direction to go so it's going to auto loop technically so let's see what happens click it and there it goes so once it gets to this end it should technically stop and then go back to the other end and then stop there and go back so it's going to auto loop back and forth so that's what auto loop is or you can use just from one point to the other and it stops once it gets there okay so as you guys saw that because i didn't stop it early enough when i did the calibration on the end and start it still hits the end so you want to stop it right before it hits the end uh, it's probably going to do that on the other side but you guys saw that it did turn around and go back yeah so so yeah, and that's the a loop mode so let's go ahead and stop it so i'm going to go back and redo the end and start and honestly i don't know why they didn't put a little switch on one end well i guess Kind of makes sense because then they'd have to run wires 
to the board here and to the remote but it seems like they could have been done and they could have run the wires inside the tubes maybe but in any case it would have been nice if they put a switch on that side and a switch on this side that way you know it can alta calibrate itself where you don't have to do this manually but i guess this is one of the downfalls of you know more budget slider and by the way guys it's super quiet like i can't barely hear it so the motor is almost silent and this time i'm gonna crank up the speed to 100 so you guys can see what that looks like all right let's go okay so it's boogieing along at 100 this is like full speed here so we'll see how well it stops and then goes back the other way all right excellent pretty smooth stop And back to the other side. So I'm going to bring my microphone in so you guys can hear it because this is definitely going to be the loudest it'll ever be because it's at 100 speed. So it is vibrating a little bit through the table, I think, or maybe that's just the motor sound, but there's a very slight humming sound or motor sound, I guess. But, you know, we are at full speed. Once you turn it down just even a little, pretty much goes away. So let's just go down to like, and by the way, you can't change it as it's going. So, I mean, just turning it down to 90, it's already much quieter. And you guys can hear it. It's, it's a lot quieter. For most all speeds, unless you're going straight to 100, it's going to be pretty much, I mean, I would say silent. So for me, this is perfect. And by the way, to pause it, you just hit the middle button and it stops. And to resume it, you just click it again and it keeps doing the same thing, which is, you know, the loop. So let's go to out of mode and then not loop, but out of stop. And so what that's going to do is just going to tell it to go to one end and stop. So let's go to this end first. We'll click it. So it should go to that end and just stop. And there it goes. And it's not going to do anything else. And now let's go to the other end. So we'll go there and then it'll just stop. And there it goes. So yeah, overall guys, the way this thing operates is very simple and very intuitive. Not complicated at all. It feels complicated at first because you're like, you know, you got a controller here. And, but if you start using it, you'll see that, you know, there's nothing too much here that's intimidating here. So yeah, the last part here, we have time lapse and can control every aspect of that. And I'm probably not going to get into that in this video because, you know, it'll get too long and complicated, but it does have time lapse capabilities that do sync with the camera. And as you saw, the, all the cables, there are a bunch of different kinds. All right. So the camera I want to set on here is this A6400 with a G Master 24 millimeter. And this is all unstabilized, the whole system here. So every little jitter or any kind of jerk, you'll be able to see it easily with this setup here. So let's go ahead and take the quick release out. So I do have this little mount here that goes on my Weeble S gimbal and it should fit in here. I think it doesn't fit perfectly, but I think we can still clamp it down. Yeah. All right. So that's good. So the first thing you want to do is you want to center this thing right in the middle. Then adjust your pan here on the ball to go completely straight because that's going to be how you have an even side to side sweep is you got to start off straight from the middle. So once that's straight, we can tighten it up and you guys can see that how much wobble that has. So it translates into a camera. Now I'm not sure if those little wheels underneath can be adjusted to go on this rod here, but I think if they could be a little bit, that would help with the wobble. So we can see here it's tracking. And this is the extreme. So that's super cool. So this is what it's going to do now. So it seems like the, the little slop that it has in there doesn't seem to be affecting it as it goes back and forth. There's just a small delay in turning the camera as it starts spinning, but everything seems very smooth overall. So, so let's move the bar the other way. And here you guys can see now it's going to panorama. So it starts in the middle. For some reason, we're a little bit off, looks like. So we can correct that. And now we're starting off straight again. And now when we go side to side, we're going to have a really large point of view panorama. So, so this could be great for time lapse. And obviously you can control all that like we saw earlier here with this motorized controller. So for the next part, let's go ahead and try to mount it to a tripod. Put the camera on, but... So yeah, we're just gonna flip this thing around and underneath you can see all the mounting points and here's my mounting plate. So I do have two bolts on here, the smaller and the larger one. So we can actually use both of them to make it even stronger. So we're gonna center it up as best as we can here and put our plate on. Now what's cool is, is that you can put the plate in permanently and leave it on here. 
because it's a low profile enough to you know not be in the way of the operation now you do want to have a pretty you know good tripod for this because you need it to be quite strong so i do have this kr cf 2451 so it's carbon fiber edition but yeah this should work pretty good hopefully you guys can see but i'm going to try to slide it on there we're just going to grab the whole slider here and we're going to slide it into the tripod now we're going to tighten it up and that feels actually really solid so here you guys can see a little better what it looks like now. I just realized that I think I mounted it the wrong way because, you know, if I wanted to tilt it back and forth, you know, I could do this. But I guess depending on what you're doing and what you need it for, I mean, this could work if you're trying to, you know, film down. But I think what I wanted is where I can lean it to get that, you know, raising and lowering kind of effect. All right, so I flipped around and you guys can see it's sitting really nicely. And I still was able to use the two locking bolts. So they got plenty of rigidity here. So one thing to consider that even though this mounts midpoint, our motor here is on the side. So even though if everything is going to be in the middle like this, it's still heavy on this side and it falls. So let's go ahead and bring our camera in. So now we have our camera on the slider and we can manually slide it around. So you guys can see that that was not tightened hard enough because there's way too much weight on there and you definitely have to have a strong tripod for this because I tightened that pretty hard and it wasn't hard enough and if you use even a bigger camera than this you're gonna have quite a bit of weight so so you might have to have a support here at least on one side that should take care of a lot of problems now there are some pretty cool ideas where you can actually go from the leg to this and then it's adjustable also so you can get an adapter like that and that could be a quick fix if you're having trouble you know with it sitting still let's see if mine is still going to sink or not here okay so it seems to be holding it but yeah it's definitely putting a lot of pressure on the head here to hold it but yeah overall guys you see it's really nice and <laughs> works very well so i think for the next part i'm just gonna do some b-roll shots with this slider and you guys can see some of the video and i'll try to do a few shots here and there and then i'll conclude with my thoughts Alright guys, so I went around the house and made some b-roll, so hopefully you enjoyed that. I definitely really like the way the slider is able to pan while moving back and forth because that makes the shots a lot more dynamic. So, so far everything has been really nice and smooth that I could tell and pretty convenient to use. Now one thing I did notice that I wanted to say, when you do turn on the controller and you go into manual mode, which I'm using mostly manual, I find that to be the most useful because I can just manually control it and I don't have to set the stop and end every time because I can just stop it myself. 
slow. That makes it a lot quicker. And most of my speed has been in, in the 70 to 80s, so pretty reasonably slow. But the thing I wanted to mention is that every time you want to use this middle panning feature, you have to reset the camera every time, you know, and then manually kind of scrub with your hand and see where it's pointing at and adjust it accordingly. All of the different knobs here, here, and then on the ball here to level all it out, especially if you're going up at the same time and turning. So there's a lot to adjust. And what I noticed is if you're connected to the remote, this is locked in. There's now the screws holding it, but you guys can see it's free. But if I plug it in to the remote, it's not going to be free anymore. So it's locked in. And now I can control it through the remote. And so what I've been doing or find it very quick and productive is that whenever I need to move the camera, I'll just lock it in, unplug it, and then it's free all of a sudden. And so now I can move it by hand really quickly where I need it, set it up, and then connect the USB cable to the controller and then start moving it electronically. And it seems like the controller itself doesn't really care when you unplug it and plug it. So I'm not sure if that's okay to do or not, but it works pretty well. I don't want to shut it off every time because if I shut it off and then turn it back on, I have to select two things to get to that. So I mean, I guess either way, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that. And another reason why I like unplugging it because I can just put it in my pocket while I'm adjusting it. And that's one thing I wish is that there was a place to put this thing or hang or maybe even magnetically somehow or or maybe I just need to make something because it does have this quarter inch thread here to somehow attach to something. In any case guys overall I'm really happy with this thing and I can't wait to use it for all my other projects. I'm pretty happy with the build quality overall. It seems pretty smooth and exactly what I would want in a slider. The carbon fiber rod seems strong enough when it does go to the end it doesn't flex really that I could tell so. So overall, I think it's pretty great little motorized slider. All right, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. And if you want to pick up the slider for yourself, I'll have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you enjoy content like this and you want to see more, then stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.